All right, so y'all go ahead and do the factoring and the math knowledge question for today. Pause the video, and then once everyone is finished, you can unpause the video, and I'll go over the correct answers. For the factoring, you're going to want to do remove, replace, reduce again. So you'll have x squared minus 2x minus 24, and then you're going to have x minus 6 and x plus 4. You can replace the 3 right here. You don't actually have to write it a second time. And then reduce the 3 and the 6, so you'll have x minus 2. And then the second one doesn't reduce, so 3x plus 4. And that would be your answer. For the math knowledge question, it says when x doesn't equal 5 or negative 5, what is this equivalent to? So we need to first factor this denominator here to make it 2x over x minus 5 times x plus 5. And then we need to make this denominator over here we change it to negative x plus 5 and we factor out a negative, we have x minus 5. five, five. So I'm going to move that negative to the top because that's the same. 1 over negative 2 is the same thing as negative 1 over 2. So I just move the negative to the numerator. So now the 2x in the first term has already x minus 5 times x plus 5. The second term has negative 2x, and it is missing an x plus 5. So we need to multiply it by that. So then if we distribute, we would have 2x minus 2x squared minus 10x over x minus 5 times x plus 5, which if you look at all the answers, they're all x squared minus 25, which is what x minus 5 times x plus 5 is. So I'll go ahead and write that as x minus 25 again. And then if we combine in our numerator, we'll have negative 2x squared minus 8x, which is b. And so that would be our answer. All right, so we're looking at lesson 28 today. We're dealing with graphs of rational functions part 2. And then we're going to look at a special limit. So hopefully you'll understand some more with graphs of rational functions and our special limits after this lesson. All right, so on these... The zeros of your numerator are the zeros of the function, and the zeros of the denominator are the x values where you have vertical asymptotes. Since every rational function is composed of non-repeating linear factors, the value is going to change signs at every zero of your numerator and denominator. So everywhere you have a zero for your numerator or your denominator, you're going to be changing from either positive to negative. So your graph is going to cross the x-axis at each zero. And it's going to jump the x-axis at every vertical asymptote. So you might have dealt with these in pre-cal last year. We're going to go over one so that you can kind of see how it works. So I want to point out that there is a negative right here in front of our equation. So that's going to change it just a little bit. So the first thing you need to do, our x zeros are at 0 and 7. Where do our factors equal 0? 0 and 7. In the denominator, they are at negative 5, negative 2, positive 2, and positive 5. So we need to go and make a number line. And you don't have to put your y-axis. You can, but it's not really necessary. And we need to make sure that we encompass all of these numbers and a little bit more. So I'm going to do negative 6 first, and then negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that'll be enough. You can go further if you want, but you don't have to. Okay, so we need to put dots at our numerator zeros. So dots at zero and seven. Okay, and then we need to put vertical asymptotes at our denominator zeros. So a vertical asymptote at negative 5, at negative 2, 
at 2 and at 5. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. Now we need to pick a number that's to the right of any zero or asymptote. So go to the right of it. So that would be 8 is to the right of both our last zero and our asymptote. So if we plug in 8, we need to know whether it's a positive value or a negative value. So that's positive, that's positive, that would be positive, 8 plus 2 would be positive, 8 minus 2 is positive, 8 minus 5 is positive. So all of these are positive, but we got the little negative up front. So that means that we're going to start just below the y-axis, I mean the x-axis. So it's going to start here, and then we have to go through every dot, and then you're going to approach your asymptotes. So that's going to be the first little bit. And then add an asymptote to get across it, you're going to have to jump because you're going to have to change from positive to negative. We can only cross the x-axis at a zero, which we don't have one, so we just have to go back and go to the other asymptote. To get across it, we're going to have to jump again. So it's going to come up here, and then we're going to go through our zero, and then we're going to approach our asymptote. To get across the asymptote, we have to jump. And then we can't cross the x-axis here, so we're just going to turn away from it and approach the asymptote. And then again, to get across our asymptote, you have to jump to the other side, and then you're going to go down, I mean go up and approach the x-axis. But you're never going to cross it, you're just going to approach it. And so that's the basic um, shape of that graph. So now we're going to look at another one. So again, you first want to start out by finding your zeros of your numerator and your denominator. So that would be negative 5, 3, and 1. For your denominator, you're going to have 4, negative 2, negative 4, and positive 1. You just set each of your factors equal to 0. So we're going to graph on our x-axis. We're going to start with negative 6, and then negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and then we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so we're going to put dots at negative 5, 3, and 1. So negative 5, positive 3, and positive 1. And then you're going to put asymptotes at 4, negative 2, negative 4, and at 1. And what do you notice at 1? We already have a 0 there. So you don't want to have a 0 and an asymptote at the same place. So you need to erase your little 0 that you had there. And we're going to circle 1 on both of those, and we're going to come back to them. Okay, so we need to pick a number to the right of our zero or asymptote that's all the way at the right. So we're going to pick five, and then if you plug in positive, 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 and positive. So that means that we're going to start above the x-axis because it was a positive number. So we're going to approach our first asymptote. To get across it, we're going to have to jump down to the bottom. And then we can go through 3, and then we just approach, whoops. We're going to go through 3, and then just approach our asymptote. Okay? The shape of this isn't really so important. You could make it look more up here and then curved. It's really not a big deal what it looks like on that end. You just need to have the basic shape here. So then we're going to jump at this asymptote. Since there's not a zero, we can't cross the x-axis, so we just go back down. And then we jump, and we're going to go through our zero. And then we can make a little hump, but eventually we have to come back and approach the x-axis. So you could make it look like that, or if you wanted it to come more just like that, you could do that as well. Either one of them would be fine with me. Okay, so now we're coming back to the one. 
If you have a zero and an asymptote in the same place, you're going to make a little eraser mark where that number occurred, so at 1, and you're going to make a little hole. You have a hole at, at 1 instead of an asymptote or a zero. So you ignore it until you get finished graphing it, and then you go back and erase and build a little hole there. So that's how um, the graphs of rational functions work. They're not terribly difficult, but you do need to practice to make sure that you get the basic idea of them. Okay, so now we're going to look at special limits. This limit that we're about to look at can be evaluated very easily if you recognize that it's just the definition of the derivative. So if you look here, this is the limit as h approaches 0 of a function x plus h minus a function over h. All that is is the definition of the derivative. And our function is found here. Our original function is just sine of x. And the x value is pi over 2. So what is the derivative of sine? The derivative of sine is cosine. And then you're going to plug in your x value. So all this is asking for is what is the derivative of sine evaluated at pi over 2? So what is the derivative of sine? Cosine. And so what is the cosine of pi over 2? That equals 0. And so this whole thing would just equal 0. Looking at it like this. You can break it back into sine of x plus h minus sine of x over h. All that is, you take the derivative of sine, which is cosine. And if they have a number plugged in, then after you take the derivative, you plug in that number and evaluate it. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is just asking for the derivative of this second part here. What is the derivative of ln of x? You should have that memorized by now. It is 1 over x. So that whole thing equals 1 over x. It's not asking you to actually work it out. Um, you just have to evaluate it. Okay? Looking at this one, what is the derivative that we are looking for? Well, they give us the function e to the x. And so the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And so that's all you do. So that's how... Um, those special limits can be evaluated. They're not asking you to actually do the definition of the derivative. They just want you to figure out the shortcut there. So hopefully as you practice those, you'll become more familiar with them. Your homework tonight is 1 through 25, so you need to make sure to do those tonight so you can go over any questions that you have tomorrow.